we put a lot of work into developing a system where uh, we gave the evidence-based treatments and we trained people well to give them. But I think, as you mentioned at the start, the outcomes were not as good as we were anticipating initially. Um, and we could have been just very disappointed by that. Um, but the data allowed us to learn so much and, and to improve. And w the way we deliver the therapy now is different from the way we would have guessed. And it's a bit different from what the randomized controlled trials would tell you, because, you know, we've figured out little tweaks to the system that work better for those people who, you know, for one reason or another, haven't been doing so well in the first place. So you're just learning new things all the time. And it just makes it so much more exciting to be in those services. Um, I mean, recently we did a, an analysis of the large data set and we found there's a subset of people who don't have any particular diagnosis, but have a number of personal characteristics um, that seem to cluster together. And they have on average pretty poor outcomes, about 20% recovery. But once we'd spotted those people, um, we could then run the algorithms which identify them when people come in into the services at the beginning. And people in about four or five services got together and thought, what can we offer them which might be a little different that might be addressing the sort of intersection of problems they have? And having done that, we've more or less uh, doubled the recovery rates of those people. This is just something you know you can't get at without having this sort of data and um it makes it so interesting <laughs>